With over a hundred features, the Notion Enhancer is one of the most powerful Notion add-ons that you can get to customize your Notion desktop app. And in this video series, I'm going to be walking you through every single one of these options so that you can decide which one is best suited for your needs. And trust me when I say this, but you'll be kicking yourself for not using the Notion Enhancer earlier because there are some absolute gems in here. And we're starting right now. Let's now go through the tweaks section of the Notion Enhancer. So the main things that we can tweak in this are the common style and the layout changes. So the very first one is the height of the frameless drag area. So this is basically the rectangle that's added at the top of the window when we have the integrated title bar mode selected. And you can see that the height at the moment is about 15. So it's basically talking about this particular area at the top. Let me just go ahead and quickly change this to let's say 50 and let's see what that does. So as you can see, the height at the top is now increased to 50. Again, it's it's down to your personal preference as to what you like but I actually preferred it to be the 15 as it was. So the next feature we can tweak is basically being able to set the width at which the columns within your Notion setup will actually become wrapped. So if I look at these columns in the background here, you can see that at a certain distance, they actually become wrapped and then I can align them as different columns within my page in Notion. If I go ahead and make this 6000, you'll see that the columns within my page are no longer columns. And that's because they're not being wrapped. Because I've increased the size to 6000 pixels, that basically means means that these columns are no longer being wrapped around and I can't actually create that column width. If I go ahead and change this to just being six pixel, you can see that it's gone back to my setting effectively. Again, you can play around with this depending on how you want your Notion page to look. For me personally, I just leave it as being the 600 because I do actually want the column features to be showing up on my pages and this width seems to be just enough. So the next feature is integrated scroll bars. So by default, this is toggled on. So it's basically a feature that we can turn on and that allows the scroll bars to fit a little bit better within the Notion user interface instead of the default ones. So what this basically means is that your scroll bars within your Notion app will appear exactly how you can see it appearing within the Notion Enhancer, which is basically a lot thinner and also you can see it's got these rounded edges as well. Let me just turn this off just so you can see the difference. So just keep an eye on these uh, on this main scroll bar within the Notion app. So at the moment you can see it's got a round edge and it's also a lot thinner. So let me just go ahead and turn this off. So there you go. You can see if I actually open up the Notion Enhancer, you can see the difference. So this is the Notion Enhancer integrated scroll bar. You can see it's rounder, whereas the default one is got this straight edge and it's a lot thicker as well. So again, it's down to your personal preference as to what you want to see. I actually quite like the Notion Enhancer one because it's a little bit smoother. It gives it a much more cleaner user interface. Let's just have a look at a table as well to see if we can spot a difference within the horizontal scroll bar as well. So here you can see an example of a horizontal scroll bar so again you can see it's got these straight edges and it's a lot thicker and turn on the integrated scroll bar and see what changes are how this changes the horizontal scroll bar and there you go you can see exactly like the vertical scroll bar the horizontal one is a lot thinner and it's also a lot smoother as well around the edges so it just fits in just a little bit better visually it just looks a lot more appealing I think so the next feature is actually having snappy transitions now I don't don't actually know what this means so if you manage to figure out what difference this particular feature makes then please let me know in the comments below because I love to find out what the actual usefulness of this particular feature is by default this is actually turned on so if there is a change being made I couldn't actually figure out what that particular feature was but if someone's gone through the effort of actually developing this then I'm sure there's a good use for this so the next feature I'm going to go through is the thicker bold text by default this is turned off but let me just quickly show you what the difference is when you turn this on. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a particular text bold without turning this on and then I'm going to turn it on to see what the difference is. So let's say we want to be able to make this particular text bold. So we'll go ahead and click this. It obviously makes the text bolder but it's not as 
as thick as when we turn on the feature from the Notion Enhancer. So let's go ahead and toggle this on now. And as we always have to do, let's go ahead and relaunch the app, but just keep an eye on this text over here. And there you go. As you can see, the same bold text is a lot more thicker now, and it's a lot more prominent on the page. I actually prefer this feature because it does make this text stand out a lot more. So I personally like to keep this particular one turned on. The next feature is having a more readable line spacing. Again, by default, this is turned off. What this basically means is that the gap between the paragraphs and the lines is going to be almost twice as wide. Let's turn this on and relaunch the app. So as you can see here, it just makes reading large amounts of text a lot easier on the eyes. So I personally like to keep this toggled on. It just gives your eyes a little bit more breathing space when you are actually reading through line after line of text. The next feature is quite self-explanatory. So it's just being able to hide the help button. By default, this turned off. What this basically means is that when you turn this on and you relaunch the app, it will actually remove the help button on the bottom right. So let's go ahead and see that in action. And there you go. As you can see, there is no longer that question mark on the bottom right hand corner. The next feature is condensed bullet points. Let's say that we've got these two paragraphs and I'm going to turn those into bullet points. And let's go ahead and toggle this. And there you go. As you can see, it is really condensed the two bullet points together. There is hardly any space between them. So the next feature is scroll database toolbars. So a bit like the snappy transitions, I couldn't actually see what difference these were making within my Notion app. If you've managed to figure out what difference turning this particular feature on and off does, then please do let me know in the comments below. So the next section is bracketed links. So let me just quickly show you what that means. Essentially, it creates these brackets around any text that has a link or a hyperlink attached to it. So by default, this is turned off. So let's say we want to highlight the word Warren Buffett and we want to put a link to it. So as you can see, the link or any text that has a link associated to it, you can see that it gets underlined like this. So you can see that it's got a link associated to it. Let's go ahead and turn on this particular feature in the Notion Enhancer. And there you go. As you can see, instead of the word Warren Buffett being underlined, Underlined. It's actually got these double brackets both at the end and at the start of the word. Similarly, you can see that we had another link down here next to the number one, and that's also been sort of bracketed like that. Question of the day Which one of these Notion Enhancer features are you going to be using as part of your setup? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then make sure you smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.